In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between signs and symptoms. A lot of times we use these two terms interchangeably, uh, or we use them together because we look about the, or we ask about the patient's signs and symptoms. So a symptom is something that a patient is going to tell you. So it's fairly subjective. So they're going to tell you like their chest is hurting or they're sick to their stomach or their arm hurts or they're short of breath. Those are all symptoms, something that they tell you. Now signs are something that we can observe and typically we think of vital signs. So we measure like a blood pressure or a pulse or respiratory rate, pulse oximetry, temperature, blood glucose level, those are all signs as part of our vital signs that we measure with every patient. Now in addition to the vital signs, there can be things like skin condition that we observe. So we see that their skin might be sweaty or we see that their skin may look pale. Um, we can also observe their position they're in. Maybe they're guarded where they're holding their stomach kind of curled up in a fetal position. Those can be signs. And there's a few other specific signs that I wanted to mention. One is called Levine's sign. And this is when they take a fist and they hold it to their chest. And oftentimes you'll see this when they're um, talking about chest pain. And when they're holding this, this fist to their chest, it is an indication of a heart attack. And that's Levine's sign. Another one is called Kerr's sign, and this is when their left shoulder hurts, when they're having spleen uh, problems or a spleen injury. Um, and this is a referred pain that we see. Just like with the gallbladder, we oftentimes see pain in the right shoulder. But Kerr's sign is when the spleen is injured or damaged and we see pain in the left shoulder for the patient. Gray Turner's sign is when you have bleeding to the, uh, kind of on the back, maybe around to the side, but it's usually below the rib cage and above the pelvis, and it indicates that they have some sort of abdominal bleeding. Could be that they have a ruptured abdominal aneurysm or some other bleeding uh, in the abdominal cavity, maybe due to trauma, but that is Gray Turner's sign. Another sign for abdominal bleeding is Cullen's sign, and that's when you have uh, darkening or bruising around the umbilical cord, uh, the belly button, and if you have bleeding in that area, it also could indicate some sort of abdominal bleeding, or sorry, bruising discoloration of that area, you could have an indication of some uh, bleeding in there. So Cullen's sign indicates uh, that there may be some abdominal bleeding, a topic pregnancy, aortic aneurysm again, and that's going to be a darkening or bruising around the umbilical cord. One that you hear about in trauma is battle signs, where you're going to have bruising behind the uh, ear in this area, and it usually develops 24-48 hours after an injury. So a lot of times we don't see it in EMS, but it usually indicates that we have a base of their skull fracture. So the base of the skull is broken. Um, if you do see it, um, that's one of those contraindications for using a nasopharyngeal airway at that point. So um, look for that battle sign behind the ear, but that usually develops a day or two after the injury occurs. So we may not see it that much in EMS. And kind of a rare one is Kussmaul sign. Now we heard of Kussmaul when we talk about Kussmaul breathing, the respiratory pattern. Um, but this one actually has to do with the neck veins. And somebody that has severe um, COPD or maybe even tension pneumothorax developing, as they inhale and pressure increases, um, the jugular vein can't drain as well and you'll see it start to fill up along the, the neck. And again, this is one that you really kind of have to look for. It's not something that we see typically um, just in general observation. You kind of have to know what you're looking for. Uh, but this is one that could indicate that they have some sort of a COPD um, or a tension pneumothorax developing or heart failure. Um, <clears throat> there are some uh, uh, ways of, of measuring how far up from the neck and that gives you some indication of the severity of the disease. Again, that's something we typically do in EMS, but Kussmaul sign is when you see the neck veins distended um, because of um, a, a, a chest problem, a breathing problem when they inhale. So those are a few different signs and symptoms. Um, remember that a sign is something that you observe and a symptom is something that the patient tells you.